one month since I switched from using professional shampoo and conditioner to using Dove shampoo and conditioner. So let's go wash my hair today because it is wash day and then I'm gonna break down my thoughts on switching to drugstore shampoo. My hair is now all clean, so let's get into it. First, I'm going to make a confession to you. As a professional hairstylist, for years I have told people drugstore shampoos are bad, professional products are good. But I eventually had some people ask me why. Why were the drugstore products better than the professional products? And I couldn't really answer their question because we're basically just told as professional that drugstore products are bad and professional products are good. And I couldn't really answer that question of why one was better than the other, other than to say the ingredients were better. But I realized I didn't even know if that was true because I'd never actually sat down and looked at the ingredients of any of the products that I've used, whether it was from the drugstore or a professional product. And even if I did, most of them are ingredients that I don't recognize and don't understand. And they're not necessarily things that we are taught as hairdressers in a really in-depth way. I thought about the fact that I generally tend to enjoy lots of drugstore makeup over more expensive brands that you can get at Sephora. So why would the same not be true for drugstore shampoos over professional shampoos? What I did was I began to research ingredients themselves, what those ingredients actually did for your hair, which ingredients would actually cause potential problems, why some people might experience things like hair loss, or irritation or just adverse experiences to a product, what ingredients might cause those types of things and why. And I did all kinds of research and decided to choose a drugstore shampoo that I thought would fit my hair and give that a try. Let me be very clear that my review today is only on the products, the specific products that I'm talking about. Not all drugstore products are going to be the same as the ones that I'm talking about today, and not all professional products are the same either. Once I started researching, I realized on both ends, high-end professional products and lower-end drugstore products, there were good and bad in both categories, but there really wasn't any product that's going to be significantly bad for you. Everything goes through rigorous testing and approvals through health authorities in different countries and whatnot. And while some ingredients may be more acceptable to some countries than others, in general, everything that you're going to find in every bottle of shampoo, conditioner, treatment, or oil on the shelves is considered safe. That's not to say that you might not like or enjoy the experience of certain products, but it's really not going to matter what the price tag is. It's going to matter whether or not the ingredients you're using are the ingredients that are right for your hair. Because my audience mostly has thin and fine hair like me, the biggest concern is always, is it gonna make my hair fall out? So let's just quickly touch on what might make your hair fall out. Why might someone use a Dove shampoo and say that their hair was falling out and other people say it's great? There is nothing in Dove shampoo or any shampoo for that matter that's going to make your hair fall out. Now, there are people who have experience using Dove shampoo, other brands of shampoo, and expensive, very high-end shampoos and had excessive hair fall. But what causes that excessive hair fall isn't the product itself. It is an adverse reaction to ingredients in the products. Certain products are going to have ingredients that just do not work well with your skin. They are more irritants. They are going to cause problems for your scalp health, and that is going to make your hair fall out. But that is no different than someone's skin having an adverse reaction to a product and breaking out. It doesn't mean that that product is bad. It just means that that product wasn't right for your skin or your scalp and your hair. So the shampoo and conditioner that I used was the Bond Strength Peptide Complex from Dove. So I used their shampoo and their conditioner. I also used their hair mask. It is the 10 in 1 Bond Strength Peptide Complex hair mask. And then I also switched my hair oil to the OGX um, Coconut Miracle Oil. It is the Damage Remedy one. 
It is the thickest one recommended for coarse thick hair. The reason I chose this over one of their more finer oils is because my hair is super, super dry from bleaching. And I just wanted to see what would happen if I use the thickest one. Would it work? Could I wash it out of my hair? So let's talk about these products. I chose to use a bond strengthening shampoo because that is something that I use on a regular basis anyways, because my hair is chemically treated um, bleached specifically, even though I have gone away from bleach and switched to hair dye, which is a little bit more gentle on my hair than the bleach. Most of my hair has still been bleached for over a decade and using a bond strengthening shampoo is really important to keep my hair strong and stop it from constantly breaking and getting dull and brittle. So I went with the bond strength the shampoo and the conditioner and the um, mask because that's the one that made the most sense for my hair. In this video, I'm not going to break down how you should pick your products for your hair, but I am going to start to get into that a little bit more for you guys and teach you how to determine your hair's needs and what types of products and ingredients are going to help solve your hair's problems or serve your hair in the best way possible. What I was using prior to Dove, I was actually using two different shampoos and conditioner. I would switch back and forth between a Matrix Bond shampoo meant for blonde hair and a volumizing shampoo by Sexy Hair. The reason I would do that is because I didn't find that I got a lot of volume and fluff from my Bond shampoo from Matrix, so I would switch to the volumizing shampoo from Sexy Hair when I wanted a little bit more lift and fluff and I was going to be styling my hair. I will say this combo right here has been superior for me than my old shampoos. Mostly because my hair not only feels and looks healthy like when I used a bond strengthening system, but it also has fluff and fullness and volume. I can get both of those things out of this shampoo and conditioner. And I even work this conditioner into my scalp because there are ingredients that nourish the scalp in this. They are meant to go on your scalp. They are meant for invigorating your hair follicles and speeding up hair growth and helping your hair grow really strong. So I really wanted to use it the way that it was intended. This conditioner is meant to be worked into your scalp and I did and absolutely comes out looking clean and shiny, rinses out of my hair no problem every single time. So I'm not a thousand percent sold on continuing with this shampoo and conditioner, but I will be for sure switching the ones I used to use. The reason I think these worked better for me is because this is a bond strengthening shampoo with all of those nice, smoothing, hydrating and healing ingredients, but it's also a sulfate shampoo. My old bond shampoo was sulfate free and that just never got my hair as clean and fluffy as I think I like it to be. It never removed quite as much of that oil and buildup as a sulfate shampoo does. And I would always switch to my volumizing shampoo, which did have sulfates and would give me that fluffiness, but would leave my hair looking a bit dry. So I do like that even though this is a bond strengthening shampoo, it is not sulfate free because a lot of bond strengthening shampoos are, but for my hair type, this works a lot better than a sulfate free option. I quickly compared this shampoo and conditioner to several of the most popular bond strengthening shampoos and conditioners, and I will tell you they are not that different. They're actually very similar, and the biggest differences come in fragrances and preservatives, but the actual active ingredients that are going to heal your hair, make your hair shiny, make your hair look and feel its best are actually incredibly similar. I'm gonna break down a few ingredients that you might see on this shampoo that might worry you, and we'll talk about the reality of what those ingredients are and what it actually means. So obviously sulfate is one that some people are scared of. They think sulfates are bad. I have other videos. I will tag a video here that talks about why sulfates aren't bad, but sulfates are just a strong surfactant. They are just soap that really efficiently cleans your hair. So depending on what products you're using in your hair and your hair type, you may or may not benefit from sulfates. And in my case, I do benefit from sulfates. So I like a sulfate shampoo, not a sulfate free one. One of the cons, and I'd say the major con to this product that I found is it is heavy on the fragrance. There's quite a bit of fragrances and additives for color and pleasant consistency and whatnot. And those do not cause a problem for me. They are not harmful in any way. Some people don't like a strong smelling shampoo and artificial fragrances can be quite irritating to some people's scalp. 
So if you find that your scalp is itchy or you're shedding quite a bit of hair after several washes with a shampoo that has a lot of fragrance, then fragrance might not be the right ingredient for you. And some higher end shampoos are going to use more things like essential oils and or just be fragrance free. But for me, the fragrances cause no issue and I have, so they're, they're just not like a problem for me, but um, they're not necessarily a problem ingredient, but they are an ingredient that could be a problem for some people. This product has a well-rounded amount of protein in it. It has got soy proteins, vegetable pro proteins, pea proteins. It's got SH polypeptides, which is a derivative of collagen to help plump up your hair and make it look and feel its best. The protein that are included in the shampoo are optimized for chemically treated and damaged hair. So if that's what you're using a product for and that's what you're looking for is something to help heal your chemically damaged hair or hair that's just damaged in general, then this is going to be a great option for you. Sodium gluconate is another great ingredient. It helps the hair to not feel so rough. It helps keep it hydrated. It's very conditioning and smoothing, and it is really nice to have a lot of conditioning and smoothing ingredients in your shampoo when it has sulfates because it helps to counteract the potential dryness that the sulfates can give you. So you want, if you have shampoos with sulfates in it, you want to look for shampoos that also have a lot of hydrating and hydrate prom hydration promoting products or ingredients in it. You've also got glycerin. And this just adds moisture. It's great for reducing frizz. It's just, it's a great, and again, hydrating, moisturizing ingredient. It's just one that sounds scary and sometimes throws people off. And citric acid. Some people freak out about the word citric acid. It sounds scary. It's in very high-end products. It is a very widely used ingredient and it is for helping to make your hair stronger and it is perfect if you have chemically treated hair especially if you've been going blonde and really helping your hair strands stay strong one question i know i will often get about a shampoo like this is it silicone free no it is not it has dimethnicol in it not dimethnicone dimethnicol dimethnicol is very similar to dimethnicone it is a silicone it helps to lock in moisture it helps to coat the hair and make it shiny and very smooth feeling and lock in all those good ingredients into your hair strands so that your hair can really benefit from them dimethnicol is slightly superior to dimethnicone because it is slightly easier to wash off the hair making it less likely to build up in your hair and scalp but you typically don't need to be worried about silicones in your products when you are using a shampoo or conditioner that has sulfates in it. You really only want to worry about the type of silicone in your products when the product is sulfate free because it might be more difficult. Some silicones aren't as water soluble as others, but dimethnicol is going to be pretty easy to wash out of your hair, even if you do use a sulfate free shampoo sometimes. Interesting note, the top bond building shampoo from the professional side has dimethicone in its shampoo and conditioner so if you're worried about that and you feel like that's something that cheap brands use that's not true silicone is in your highest end products because it is a fantastic ingredient at making your hair look and feel amazing for the conditioner we have dimethicol again it is again silicone we have um, lactate acid which is why i like to massage this into my scalp because it is really good at promoting strong hair follicles hair growth um, scalp invigoration and hair follicle stimulation otherwise you've just got your fragrances again you've got lots of conditioning and anti-static ingredients that are pretty standard across most conditioners none of them are super heavy and none of them are going to weigh your hair down the only concerning ingredient that most some people might see in here would be and i'm if i say it wrong pardon me but isohexadenicane denicane isohexadenicane it is probably the ingredient people are referring to when they say there are wax in these. It's not a wax. It's kind of like an oil. It is not water soluble, so it does not wash out of the hair easily. It is meant to smooth and stay on your hair to help your hair look super shiny and super smooth, get rid of roughness, dryness, frizz, but it is super lightweight, so it will not weigh your hair down. And again, as long as you are following up the next shampoo with a sulfate shampoo, then you don't need to worry about that being in your product because while it's not water soluble, it does come off with a surfactant like sulfate, laurel sulfate, or other types of sulfates. 
I'm not really gonna go too much into the mask because honestly, the ingredients in the mask are almost the same as the conditioner. It's just a little bit more concentrated, so you use it once in a while. If you like a mask, then it's great, but honestly, I don't think I really needed to use the mask to get the benefits from the shampoo and the conditioner. I think they did a great job all on their own. As for the oil, I liked it. I really liked it. I did not put it on my hair as a smoothing or styling oil. Um, or to make my hair look smooth or shiny because it absolutely made my hair look greasy when I used it But I would put it on before I went to bed I if I was gonna wash my hair the next morning I would put my silk cap on which is important because your hair is gonna be a little weaker when it's full of oil So you don't want to break your hair by roughing up your hair throughout the night So oil on silk cap to protect it and it washed out absolutely no problem at all in the morning Fair note, I did not put it in my scalp. I only put it from my mids down, but it has absolutely made a difference to the softness and shininess of my hair. Overall, I would give using these products, this Dove Shampoo and Conditioner, a nine out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because the fragrance is a little heavy for me. Um, even though it doesn't irritate me, I don't love a strong smelling shampoo and conditioner that smells really perfumey. So that loses one point for me, but it's not to say that I might not keep using it. I very well might, and I have really liked it, and I feel like it has been actually a really great product for my hair. It has made my hair look and feel amazing, and I've actually shed less hair this month than I have in a really long time. So it just really reinforced me that I need to consistently use a sulfate-including shampoo as opposed to rotating in a sulfate-free shampoo because my scalp has been much happier and much healthier being more thoroughly cleansed every two to three days as opposed to only about once a month. I hope that helps. I hope that makes you feel better if you have not had the budget for these really expensive shampoos or you just don't want to spend your money on them. But there are great options at the drugstore. It's all about understanding your hair's needs and then understanding the ingredients that are going to be beneficial to your hair as opposed to the ingredients that are going to be kind of pointless for your hair or cause adverse effects for your hair and scalp type. Please leave any comments you have any questions you have in the comments rather and I will do my best to answer those for you and I can make some more content on this topic if you guys are interested I know it's not the most exciting videos to watch but you can really transform your hair if you learn really really efficiently how to understand your hair's needs and provide your hair with what it needs Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And it also really helps me out. Bye, guys.